Introduction to Digital Photography The SLR Learning Outcomes This class focuses on SLRs and DSLRs. We'll be going through an overview of what happens within an SLR and comparing it to other types of cameras. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of the inner workings of an SLR. And you'll also be able to label a diagram of the various parts within a camera. Let us begin by taking a detailed look at the structure of an SLR. The first thing are the lens elements. This is simply an interface, mechanical and often electrical, between a photographic camera body and a lens where the light enters the camera. The second thing is the reflex mirror. And this is essentially a diagonal line which acts as a mirror that reflects the light that comes in from the lens and up towards the viewfinder. And basically the light is bent around and into your eyes. This allows you to see the scene. The shutter. Well, the shutter opens, light is collected and it falls on the film or the sensor in the case of a DSLR. The film or sensor. This affects the characteristics of the camera and how your photography will look. The focusing screen. Light is reflected here and it was more important back in the days of film before the advent of autofocus. The condenser lens. This helps to funnel the light into the pentaprism. The pentaprism. This is optical glass which reflects the light around and into the eyepiece. And the eyepiece, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to see the scene. There is a special icon on SLR cameras, both film and digital, which is a circle with a line through, which indicates the location of the film plane, or the sensor of the body. This is useful if you are making a pinhole camera, or if you're modifying the length of the lens of the camera body itself. One of the problems with an SLR, a problem that doesn't really happen with a compound camera, is that it is not a closed system. For example, things are happening. The mirror needs to move up and out of the way for light to get through and eventually onto the sensor. When mirrors move up and out of the way and the sensor opens, it means that you can see the sensor on a digital SLR. It is indirectly exposed to the outside world when changing the lens. Dust can get on the sensor, which can cause problems. Maintenance involves cleaning the sensor of dust if you purchase an SLR. Dust will always accumulate, but it can be cleaned, to some extent, using software. On the other hand, the sensor on film cameras recedes back to a film canister. Dust falls on the filters on the sensor rather than falling on the sensor itself. And sensor brushes can be used to clean dust, but please don't use liquid of any kind on the sensor when cleaning. The sensor clean option on an SLR flicks open the mirror and there is the sound of a click. And this is when the sensor is exposed. The mirrors within. Let us look at the mirrors within the camera. The mirror in front of the sensor needs to move up and out of the way to expose the sensor. There is also a secondary mirror behind the primary mirror. The primary mirror is responsible for sending light to the pentaprism and into the viewfinder. It's slightly transparent, meaning that light goes through it. The secondary mirror reflects light down which allows us to get exposure or to do autofocus. Below this box of mirrors are sensors that the camera uses to determine metering to properly capture exposure and autofocus. The DSLR. So, what is a DSLR if all of that refers to an SLR? We have already said that an SLR stands for Single Lens Reflex. The D, then, represents digital. These DSLR cameras 
will always have a viewfinder or a liquid crystal display, also called an LCD screen. Sometimes these cameras have both a viewfinder and an LCD screen. They will also have a shutter button which is used to take the photograph. This is also called the exposure button. Some cameras will have a hot shoe which is useful when adding an external flash or microphone. Within the DSLR camera, the process involves the passing of light through the camera lens, hitting the mirror and bouncing through the pentaprism and coming out through the viewfinder. The single lens refers to the fact that the lenses are interchangeable, meaning you can change the lens. This is key when talking about prime lenses which we will get back to in later topics. The reflex aspect refers to when we take the photograph. When we take the shot, the mirror opens up, light passes through it, and it reaches the camera's sensor. Mirrorless and bridge cameras don't have mirrors inside them. Instead, they have an electronic viewfinder, also denoted as EVF. When light passes through the lens of these cameras, it goes straight to the imaging sensor. The sensor sends a signal to the viewfinder, and this allows us to see the scene. You will hear a lot about full frame versus crop sensor when browsing the market for your desired camera model. This conversation refers to the size of the sensor. Therefore, they're referring to the size of the mirror box. We will be looking at this in more detail in other topics. But it's important to remember that any camera is capable of taking a good photograph. It just depends on how you use it. What have we learned in this lesson? We have learned what the main components are within a DSLR camera. We've also learned about the mirrorless and bridge cameras and the difference between these types of camera and the DSLR.